If there's one thing the British and the Jews have in common, it's the delicious baseness of our cuisine. But both communities have had their share of culinary flops, I'm sorry to say. Let's see which of the world's two favorite types of food, both which revolve around the best way to cook meat, boiling. <laughs> it's the wonderful Guy Branham and the hilarious Zach Schiffman. Come on out. It's a, it's a shiva I brought rugula. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing something, Guy. Makes everyone else look right. very bad. Thanks. That's okay. I brought chocolate Ooh. chip and raspberry because some old ladies think that chocolate chip isn't real rugelach. Rugelach. I like Brian. old ladies with opinions. It is good. Cantor's does a good rugelach. Does a good rugelach. Although I will say, there's something that happens with chocolate rugelach that's very specific, which is, uh, it's the. It's the party rugula, it's the child's rugula, it's the candy rugula. And so you'll have your fruit flavored rugula and they'll have a kind of, they'll be, they'll be sweet, but the chocolate rugula, they'll, go, they'll gild the lily. And so you'll make, they'll make a chocolate and then they're swirling chocolate on top, they're dipping it on chocolate, they're going too far with it. John, what I'm hearing is you're one of the old ladies who doesn't believe the chocolate rugula are a real rugula. No, I love them. Yeah, but then when you have <laughs> Nutella rugula, you're like, well, no, keep the chocolate, that's better. Yeah, Nutella rugula is blasphemy. Yeah, that's, yes. that's that's a Christmas tree in a Jewish home. You have to know. <laughs> you have to know Nutella is probably they were probably implicit in the Holocaust in some way. You know the way like Krups was they every like tested Mangala tested Nutella. Yes. Or whatever. <laughs> no, it's a really important point that not enough people are talking about. We've learned a lot today about Nutella and its involvement in the Shoah, as well as well as Anne Frank's unremarked upon. Bisexuality. Oh, one more point before we start, John. Earlier, John compared the rituals of the Klingons and the Jews, and I realized we all we both don't have a state of being verb. Like, oh. there, you can't say I am in Hebrew or Klingon. M maybe there's a lot going on there, you know? And Jews in general don't like hand things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. Let's see the bracket. It's oi versus oi. <laughs> you want to take a shot at the title? Uh, oi versus uh, oi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll do a better job than me. Oi versus oi. Oi versus oi. <laughs> that's oh, oh, yeah. That's, that's how you become a movie star. <laughs> All right, so here's how it works. We're going to run through these brackets, and we're going to start. Uh, we've got British food versus Jewish food, and we're going to see what takes the main title. First up, jellied eels versus gefilte fish. What's better? Jellied eels sounds like something you have to pee on yourself after eating. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not good. Yeah. What do you think, Guy? I think that gefilte fish, let's be honest, has its own natural jelly when you get it in a jar. It's hard because your entire, like this entire board is full of Jews, and so we're all going to resent eels for being a non-kosher fish, but I would also say that eels are full of all of the industrial revolution that has flown into the Thames, so I'm gonna go gefilte fish. All right, that's a good argument. Let's yeah, do gefilte. it. Gefilte fish, we like it, gefilte fish. Thank you to Malcolm, who's taken over the jury-rigged, godforsaken bracket system, first pioneered by Brian Semmel, and passed off like, a, like intergenerational trauma to Malcolm, <laughs> who's now running the PowerPoint. It's unbelievable. Next up, we have digestive biscuits versus hamantaschen. Look, I know we've been biased so far, but what are we? Come on, we're not. We're adults here. We're not going to say biscuits. Okay, here's the thing. I have to recuse myself because, as John knows well, he put me in this situation. I am now an unofficial official ambassador for the California Prune Board, and hamantaschen, of course, are one of the few great forums for prunes. Yeah. So I'm going to have to step back and say, you boys decide. Recuse this. yourself. Yeah. A lot of other uh, cookies. Desserts, they've deplatformed and canceled prunes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Hamantash is one of the last platforms that's still allowing prunes on their servers. Yeah, I mean, hum and Hamantash also, that is where chocolate is not allowed to. You I know, completely it's agree. It's all about that prune. So, you, you know, yeah. it's prune and apricot, is to me like that's where that's your sweet spot. I mm -hmm. also, every once in a while, you'll see a poppy and it's like, what are we doing here? Exactly. I don't like having It's trying to get close to something. Else. I'm not testing positive on a drug test for this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm g I think we got to give it to Hamantasha. Yeah. Digestive biscuits. I've been over there. Eh. Next up, I mean, look, I know we're we're clearly biased, but it's scones versus bagels. Come on. What does anybody want to make an argument for yeah, scones? Yeah, I actually will. Scones, I think, are like because scones are like a 4 p.m. thing, uh -huh. maybe, right? I don't know what what time is it in England. There's no way to know. But like <laughs> I, but like bagels to me, it's like people are always. You know, I also think that. Gentiles have really co-opted bagels in a way that I can't get behind anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that scones, you know, the, the, the Brits still own that, where we don't really own bagels anymore. 
Yeah, we've lost control of the like That's control. a really great point. I, I've had a bagel in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And <laughs> let me tell you, that's not the experience your bubby was intending. Um, but I've never had a scone that wasn't dry. Uh, let's be honest. What's the audience feeling? I'm going to just... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, hey, hey, hey. Check their hey. hair color before they vote. Everyone, don't go too, cr just be reasonable. I'm going to say scones and I'm going to say bagels. Scones. <laughs> bagels. <laughs> I don't think it was close. Bagels. Next up, bangers and mash versus brisket. Yeah. Okay, I'll defend bangers and mash here. Okay. First, let me talk shit about brisket. Brisket done well is a beautiful thing, but there's a lot of not done well that is going on out there. <laughs> there is a lot of, you know, uh, recipes being handed down generation to generation that begin with, well, you're going to need a half cup of ketchup and a cup of water. And those people are what hold us back as a community. Um, <laughs> where bangers and mash are, are, are filled with the stuff that clogs your otter, arteries in the most beautiful way. It is death on a plate. It is the sublime grace of smoking a cigarette, but in food form, I'm bangers and mash. Wow, that was, that was persuasive to me. Okay, I'm gonna need a timestamp of whenever you like dishonor my mom's brisket recipe <laughs> of Heinz ketchup and water and carrots, uh, and it's incredibly chewy. It really, it's you know, it's a jaw exercise, and I think it's perfect in every way. Uh, and I'm gonna honor my mother who's alive and will listen to this and will cry tears that she'll put in the brisket after this for brisket. I just want to say that I feel a similar challenge in discussing this topic right now, honestly because my mother is also listening. And here's the thing. I think, mom, skip 45 seconds forward. <laughs> I was a full-fledged adult. We were in a post 9-11 world when I found out that brisket wasn't what I thought it was. <laughs> when I found out that brisket was not what it was in my home via recipe handed down on a piece of paper that was wrong. <laughs> yes, this is about what we're doing to brisket, not what brisket can be, you know? And so I have to, uh, yeah, it's like, oh, it doesn't have to, it, it, how is it both wet and dry at the same time? It's so wet and so dry and so sweet and so not, it's bangers and mash, it's bangers and mash. Next up, we have Worcester sauce versus horseradish, Worcestershire. Worcestershire. How do you say it? Worcestershire. 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 Maybe Worcestershire. I, I don't, Worcestershire. Do British people just say Worcester sauce? I don't I know. Th in the in Boston, it's Worcester. So that's right. But Worcester. All right. It's not in the. It's in the. It's in that area of the country. You know. It's in the Duncan Red Sox zone. <laughs> The duck and Red Sox. There are too many of you here. <laughs> I don't feel safe. <laughs> Boston is not a queer space, so everybody chill out. Um, I went to college in Boston, and when they found out I was gay, they were like, yeah, graduate. Um, <laughs> yeah. Boston's gay neighborhood is Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> it's a good gay neighborhood, though. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Worcestershire or horseradish? I'll take a second to dishonor my mom after I just defended her. Uh, my mom can't taste spice. And so she likes to show off at restaurants. And horseradish is something that, like, she can eat a cup of horseradish, and she like likes to prove it to like waiters that she can do it. And she like obviously doesn't tell anyone. She just like wants to be impressive to someone who is making minimum wage. Uh, and so I have a complicated relationship with horseradish because to me, I see it as like a test of skill of my mother's. So I'll pick Worcestershire because like Bloody Mary, whatever, and it's not haunting. I like that. And now, question. Does that also affect like things like could she eat a Carolina Reaper pepper? Yeah, she could eat anything. Oh, she's wow. like, I can taste it on my lips. <gasps> That's cool. Yeah, but then How, when can we get like, your mom on hot ones? When she's like participating in your like high school's like hot wing competition contest, and it's all kids and her, you don't want that. Did that happen? Yeah. That's cool. You have a cool mom. Yeah. <laughs> I hear a brisket's good. <laughs> what do you think, Worcestershire or horseradish? I mean, I think that there is a reason that crane rhymes with pain. Um, that, that's the like Russian and Yiddish word for horseradish. Um, it like. The, that all Russian Jewish food is based on the premise that life shouldn't be good. Um, <laughs> that this is what we get. And I love horseradish, but I'm gonna say Worcestershire sauce is like such a beautiful source of umami in the Northern European palate, and also a great way to accidentally make something not vegan. 
It's it. Worcestershire, right? Worcestershire sauce anchovies. wins. Oh, sea salad. Oh, wait. What's it made from? It has anchovies in it. Oh, that's why that's it's good. Why it, that's why Alison Roman loves it. <laughs> a full English breakfast versus a Passover Seder dinner. I'll, I think this is easy. Here's the thing. There's a reason the Passover Seder dinner is only something you have once a year. You know? You're never like, oh, you know what I could go for? Maror. <laughs> no, you never say that. What's the... um? Thank you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> a rose that I would have, I would have if it was around more. It's an interesting, specific thing. But uh, it's not something I, I don't pine for it. And if I wanted to make it happen, I would. You know? And we live in a rapacious capitalist system. And if it was something people did want all year round, we'd have it all year round. There's Same thing applies to candy corn. There's a place in Brooklyn that in Brooklyn that has Hirose year round for like fourteen dollars. Wow! If you want it, cool. Yeah, it's not good. Brooklyn. <laughs> I always make a Sephardic Hirose, and uh, real like regular Jews always yell at me about how they miss the apple stuff, but mine is delicious. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> sure, have your full English breakfast, your warmed up tinned beans, your black sausage. Uh, which is actually kind of good. Black pudding. Uh, um, like, yes, a, a, a full English breakfast is fine. But a Passover Seder done properly is Jewish womanhood at its greatest height. It's saying, I'm going to tie one hand behind my back. I am going to give up all chametz, and I am going to make a magnificent deal, meal for my family while complying with an absurd number of rules. And... That, to me, is the beauty of our people. I will stand by the Seder until I die. Yeah, the thea- I mean, you can't get beyond the theatrics of a Seder. I mean, that's honestly where, I, where p- most Jews learn to act, is like throwing yes. frogs at dinner. Oh, when you're going around the circle and it's your time, it's your time to read? Yeah. Oh, I, you got to bring it. You got to bring it. You got to really Jim perform. Is Seder? Like, it's really fun. There should be one. And if there isn't, we'll have to make one. Nonetheless, here's the thing. The English breakfast comes with toast. Full English breakfast wins. <laughs> Next up, we have scotch eggs versus smoked fish. Scotch eggs. Woof. Scotch eggs are a magical, like, turducking of, again, artery-clogging deliciousness. It is oatmeal, sausage, and a boiled egg. Once you've eaten that, you're like, fuck, I sure have eaten. I, for the sake of diversity and to make the show interesting, will say scotch eggs. Please don't hold it against me, smoked fish. You have taken care of me so many times. Scotch eggs reminds me of like the golden sauce at a hibachi restaurant. That's what it always feels like. And that is too much, I think. So I have to pick smoked fish. Yes. How do you feel, Zach, about smoked fish on a cinnamon raisin bagel? Oh, like the Cynthia Nixon? Um, is that? Yes, that's where it, Yes, it is the Cynthia yeah, Nixon. The, I think do as you please. Yeah, that's right. I think if you, I mean, we would choose put raisins in anything we want. <laughs> Why should we please it here? I agree. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I'm giving it to Smokefish. I'm sorry. We're not going to abide by scotch eggs. I'm sorry. No, thank you. No. Who's supporting scotch eggs? The it's Boston the same people. Boston people. Yeah, and also the bagels in Boston, by the way, are disgusting. They're all oh, they bad. don't they don't know what Couple's they're doing. Couple's disgusting. They whatever. don't know what they're doing in Boston. A sign of just how depraved a place Boston is. You brag you brag about Dunkin' Donuts, a national chain. <laughs> it's like oh oh welcome well you know what my favorite local restaurant is McDonald's. You f***ing freaks. No wonder you wonder you're constantly beating each other up. Next up, spotted dick versus chop liver. Spotted dick for me is just a joke from the film King Ralph. (laughs) Have you ever had spotted dick? I do know this one. Uh, He says spotted dick and um, uh, Ralph looking at Bangers and Mash said, who's dick? Thank you. (laughs) You know what? This is a good time to talk about King Ralph. The entire royal family is electrocuted. That's how that movie begins. A terrible, terrible, imagine what would have happened. All of them electrocuted at once in a photo. Next thing you know, John Goodman is the king. And guess what? He learns to be good at it. No, I've, n- I've never seen it. I've never had s- Spotted Dick. Uh, <laughs> I, would just, I, I mean, I, I almost thought Spotted Dick was like a bad monkey pox joke. Yeah. yeah. Guy, what do you think? 
Nobody loves a boiled pudding episode of The Great British Baking Show more than I do. That said, it's chopped liver. Chopped liver is like elegant and lovely. Fried onions, one of our hardest working culinary like survivors, really has some of its greatest moments in chopped liver. Chopped liver. Okay. You have to honor the refrain too of like, what am I chopped liver? Like there's not, what am I spotted dick? That's right, that's yeah. true. <laughs> chopped liver wins. <laughs> Now we're in the one that has eight in it. Now the points really matter. We're going to go fast. Gefilte fish versus hamantaschen. I mean, come on, what are we doing here? Hamantaschen. Hamantaschen. Yeah. Come on, gefilte fish, get out of here with this. <laughs> Next up, bagels versus bangers and mash. It's carbs versus meat. Wow, not even close. Right, bagels. 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 I am actually honestly genuinely proud of how well Jewish food is doing today. I did not <laughs> know how well it was going to do. And it's, it's funny because it's famously bad, <laughs> but not as famously bad. <laughs> As British food. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce versus a full English breakfast. Worcestershire. What? No, I think it's a full English. I think it's a full English. Uh, let, this is, there's some, I'm hearing some dissensus. Full English? <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I'm going to give it to Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. Hey, Zach. You all like Bloody Marys, whatever. It goes on a lot of things. <laughs> Next up, we have... Smoked fish versus chopped liver. The strife on hypha. <laughs> 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 Smoked fish versus chopped liver. liver, liver, liver. <laughs> what do you think? I'll make the case for chopped liver just because smoked fish kind of also is a Nordic thing. And chopped <sighs> liver is uniquely Jewish. And it, uh, the salty, it's, they're both salty, but like I'm going to pick the salty or jewish -er thing. I mean, here's the thing. You guys are inclined to go with smoked fish because it does so many things for us. What I'm saying about chopped liver is she can't do everything, but what she does, she does with such style. You got to love her. She's the nanny named Fran named Chopped Liver. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Chopped Liver wins. Now here we are, the final four in oi versus oi. Hamantaschen versus bagels. It's sweet versus savory. Carb versus carb. Bagels versus hamantaschen. Zach, where's your head at? Uh, yeah, 100% hamantaschen. <gasps> Gas from me and the crowd. 100% yeah. hamantaschen. Yeah, I think uh, I came out anti-bagel earlier. He, he did. Yeah. That's very true. Uh, it's the bucknell of this thing. Surprised it got this far, but people are excited and Why? rooting for it. Here's the thing I don't understand about basketball. Why are you people always excited that Gonzaga made it to the final 16? Gonzaga is always making it there, and you guys are always surprised. Guy, what do you think? Um, I mean, bagels are going to win, but I will say one year my mom decided to put a buttermilk glaze on the hamantaschen, and it was a little much, but it was also great. <laughs> I'm giving it to bagels. We tried. Chop liver versus Worcestershire sauce. It's earthy, it's savory versus earthy and savory. Yeah, it is umami it's, on umami. Yeah, it's, yes, it's, it's, it's... Umami, that's a fight. It's a... <laughs> Oi mommy versus oi mommy. Yeah. Yes. And both of these are things that if they get anywhere near you, you taste it for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a room with chopped liver, you're like, there was chopped liver. I think we got to go Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. I think we have I think to. I think we sauce. have to. All right. Now, look, a lot, a lot of people expected this to be the final. <laughs> uh, in the in the great food fight between uh, Jewish cuisine and British cuisine, oi versus oi. We have bagels versus Worcestershire sauce. Obviously, two things easy to compare to one another. Here's what I'll say. Bagels, you have them more than three days in your house. You're like, ugh. Worcestershire sauce can sit in your refrigerator for five, seven years and still be there, but you're probably going to accidentally throw it away in the intervening years, and then you're gonna have a recipe that calls for it, and you're not gonna have it, and you're gonna, you will miss it. You will miss it. So I think after talking myself into that corner, I'm gonna say uh, Worcestershire. That is a longevity is not the coolest thing about a food. <laughs> you can, we can, you look, you can, we can eat honey from the Egyptians. <laughs> that is cool. I'm convincing myself. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, I don't think we can trust a food you move with. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know, there's that box that came with you. It's been with you for four houses. Also, it has the paper around it. Doesn't Worcestershire sauce have the paper? I don't like that. I don't like that. It doesn't need to be there. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, with everything that's going on in the world, rising authoritarianism, anti-Semitism, I'm not going to give it to, to a, some kind of British sauce. Not, not with everything that's going on. 
I agree that what, what the Thomas people did to bagels is morally reprehensible. <laughs> what the freezer did to bagels is ugly and shameful. Yeah. The worst being gluten-free, of course. The wor yes, these are horrible I'm things. I'm sorry. It's Eat just else. deal with it. <laughs> but a bagel at its prime, a bagel, the, the, like the, arch the, the, the quintessential bagel. Yes. That's what we're talking about. Oh, hey, about. hey, I would like to throw a wrench right now, New York or Montreal. I knew you were going to say New York. I knew you were going to bring Montreal bagels into this. And while it is true, my parents, who are impressed by nothing, also why I host this podcast, when I tell you, I, can, I march them into the Oval Office, nothing. When I tell you when they ate a Montreal bagel in my house, they were like, that's impressive. <laughs> that's, that's really something. Wow, we're so proud of you. You got us this kind of bagel. <laughs> so we're going to give it to bagels. <laughs> and that is Oi versus Oi. Thank you so much to Guy and Zach. See Guy on October 8th in Seattle and go watch Bros opening September 30th. Guys and go Bros. Go see Bros in the theaters, please. See it in the goddamn in theaters and go listen to season one of Zach's podcast The Heart She Whistles season two is coming soon yeah eventually <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it's a it's a self it's not self help it's but a self help audio book that's a podcast nice